It is time to be joined by our good friends Marcy and David from uh, the Berkshire Edge. That's right. Uh, you can find them at the Berkshire Edge dot com. Uh, they are there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, and they bring you news and information and events going on in and around South County and uh, adjacent areas of New York and Connecticut. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. We're a little behind schedule this morning, but we are here. Hey, the, you know, if you're Pardon? at least if you're behind schedule, you still have a schedule. <laughs> so. Well, <laughs> we're behind your schedule. <laughs> all, sure right. About all, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's go to some of the stories that we have here. First of all, uh, the uh, I thought this was kind of settled, but it's not. The ongoing dispute no. between the foundry and the owners of a Truck Orient Express Restaurant. This which is a very upsetting story. It's, 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 it is. Uh, it is. It's sad because it's not only business against business, it's neighbor against neighbor. Well, and it has really divided the community. I mean, the quick background, and David will join us in a second. The quick background is that there are these two businesses in Great Barrington. There is a restaurant called the Orient Truck Orient. Well, this is in West Stockbridge. Yeah. And there is a uh, place called The Foundry, which uh, plays music on the weekends. Um, many years ago, the town of West Stockbridge closed down the road, the, the vehicle road, that went to Truck Orient Express. And so the only way you get by car to truck is across a, um, a path, a road that is owned by the foundry. And when the foundry does its outdoor uh, music, they don't want people driving across that road because it endangers the, uh, their audience, audience members. And so this has become an enormous fight. It's been going on for months. Um, we're getting letters to the editor. It's, it's dominating uh, the West Stockbridge Select Board meetings. Um, and, and there's such anger. Um, and people are accusing each other of, you know, of horrible things. And write, other people are writing letters to us you know, in support of one or the other. Um, and it, you know, and it, it it divided the community. Um, it shows how easy it is to, uh, um, you know, to to for a town to to blow up. You, and and basically, what's what's left in the aftermath? Just looking at this, the only the only way I see, I can see this settle is for the town to make some sort of decision about rights away or opening up uh, another sure. road because uh, it's, it's gonna, it can go through all the courts it wants, but uh, the town's going to have to remedy the situation because basically the town created the situation. Yes, right. Well, and then there's you know one other thing that the restaurateur is saying that on the two nights a week that uh, these concerts take place, that it is too noisy for their patrons to eat. Um, so that's the other issue, um, and yet there are people who are writing to us saying that, uh, you know, this is bringing people into the downtown, into the downtown West Stockbridge. It's bringing all kinds of people that uh, um, ordinarily couldn't come, you know, wouldn't be here. I mean, it's good for businesses. So it's it's very, uh, you don't know who's right, I mean, yeah. and, and, but the trouble is that nobody's right. I was going to say um, at this point, it doesn't matter who's right, who's right. wrong. Uh, the, the town, someone has to be forceful to step in and settle it and, and let the businesses uh, prevail in one way or another, really. Uh, it's uh, it, you, Because the longer it goes on, the heat of divide and, and the more people are, are, are going to remain split. Uh, it's just right. a bad situation. I want to go on to the next, uh, uh, the next story that you have here, and that's um, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation. Uh, and uh, of course, Monument Mount Regional High School. Uh, I know that you, you folks at the Berkshire Edge have been covering this for a while, but we've been talking about this back and forth, uh, and and now once again, uh, it's up in the air. Yes, right. The the the, the solution is is the drive the driveway to the high school is um, uh, there have been several accidents. Uh, 
several serious accidents right at the at where the driveway meets the highway, route, U.S. Route 7. And uh, there's been some calls about, some talk about, well, why don't we put a traffic light there so that it will slow down the traffic zooming, um, you know, north and south, and people trying to, uh, at the same time, you know, take their, get their kids to school. And there's school buses, too, of course, that, that uh, line up trying to get in the driveway. And um, uh, everyone wants the, the solution that everyone thought of would be easiest would be just to put a traffic light there. That would slow everything down. But the DOT, Mass Department of Transportation, says no. <laughs> They're not going to do that. Now, why Why is that? Um they have certain kinds of regulations about where and, and when they can put traffic lights in. Uh, state roads. It's yeah. State roads. Yeah. Seven, right? yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, and if and uh, and it sounds crazy, but if they go against those regulations once, uh, then all of a sudden they've opened up yeah. a precedent, and all of a sudden uh, there's 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 a lot of money that's going to be put on the table. But you'd, you'd still think there's some way you can negotiate something out of it. You, that's the whole thing. Well, they, they're thinking of putting um, some kind of uh, mitigating uh, entrance to this. To this, uh, it, it, its problem was is it has poor sight lines for turning, and um, they have kids who are driving too. Kids who are driving, like sixteen-year-olds. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes the roads are not very, um, you know, are, are icy. So, so, the, so it's all, so, all, it's, so, just a, it's, it's just an unfortunate. Um, so the state really wants to mitigate it by putting in other, uh, by doing other things. Yeah, but um, it, it, it gets quite the dis- yeah. discussion about this gets quite heated, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, they, you know, the Department of Transportation says that they're going to install a technologically advanced system. <laughs> I always thought that was a traffic light, but uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see what they come up with All right, to uh, make this intersection a little safer. Oh, I know in, in, in Salisbury, uh, the state has come up with uh, uh, traffic reducers with uh, what they do with the roadway, where they narrow it in, search of where it's in certain places and they expand it out in other places. and. Uh, that seems to work, but uh, so they'll try something. The, the next story should really wake everybody up as to, uh, <laughs> about the, the uh, business of marijuana. It, it's not the fact that <laughs> it's not the fact that uh, Theory Wellness uh, has been uh, ordered by the Attorney General to pay back unpaid wages and penalties, three hundred thousand dollars in unpaid wages and penalties. Uh, yeah, that's not that's not. A small amount of money. No, and right. and they agreed to pay it back, or, you know, basically right away, and they've corrected the problems. But now you see the amount of money. Now you see the amount of money really uh, that flows through these places. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well we know how much money yeah. thro- flows through these places because the town gets a percentage, and uh, yeah, you know, and uh, it's been a windfall for the town. Right. They should do the same for uh, alcohol. Yes. Don't you think? Um, Well, there is tax. (laughs) Isn't alcohol heavily taxed? Yeah, but this is a special tax. Yeah, there's a tax Um, upon. Yeah, there's a separate tax upon a tax. uh, Right. But still, I mean, when you. Well, I don't know. Did you explain uh, what our story is about? I mean, the the theory of wellness was found not to have paid about $300,000 in weight. Wage or no? They're they're being forced to pay three hundred thousand dollars in wages and penalties because apparently they did not pay their workers for overtime and holidays. Right. So um, and there were complaints, and so <coughs> Theory Wellness is now paying three hundred thousand dollars in wages and penalties, and this has been imposed by the state secretary yep. of state, Mara right. Healy, or the AG. Sorry, the, the AG, term, yeah. yeah. But yep. it is the state. Well, so, it, um, you know, it's one of those things that you, but you, you get to see, uh, uh, and how quickly the uh, the companies turned around and agreed to pay it. Uh, 
also is an indicator that uh, uh, there's there's just a lot of money in them dark hills. That's all you can oh, say. Well, 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 especially this first one. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, we have a picture there, but you could see people lined up in the driveway, you know, for a quarter mile or so, or half a mile, all lined up to get pot from Theory Wellness. It's it's. Now you know we now yeah. have four places in uh, in uh, Great Barrington, um, and I think that they are not doing as well as uh, as Theory Wellness is. Um, you know, Theory Wellness is the first; it's very well established, um, but we have. Two on Main Street in Great Barrington, and one on uh, Route uh, Seven, um, almost sort of catty corner across from Guido's. Um, and we don't see lines like that at these other places. In fact, you know, often when I drive past downtown, um, I see these other two places that are downtown. They look kind of empty. Nobody. They don't seem to be busy at all, so I think there's going to be kind of a shakeout um, right. sometime soon. All right. Speaking about a shakeout, let's go back to another story that we keep hitting on, and that is the Housatonic Waterworks. Oh, geez. Uh, yes. Um, the Housatonic Waterworks. Well, this is this is a, a story that has. Uh, you know, real hi- history. The little village of Housatonic that is within the town of Great Barrington um, has its own private water system. Um, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the water system, the, the privately owned system, is uh, just has not had the money to maintain its uh, pipes. And so the water is, uh, for some customers, is uh, just cloudy and muddy. And this is drinking water. You know, we always assume that, you know, that the the municipal water systems will provide us with, uh, you know, nice, clean drinking water. But in this case, uh, for the town of uh, Housatonic, or village, village of Housatonic is it's not happening, and, uh, so we have this situation with how to um, how to how to remedy this. Well, what makes it even more uh, even a worse situation? The value of the company is a negative twenty five million dollars. Yeah, that's right. I right. mean, so that only indicates one thing can happen, and that that means the state or the town sooner or later is going to have to step in because there's no way right. a private company is going to, is going to do this. Right, and they've you know there's as they say that you know there's millions and millions of dollars in attempting to. Uh, they had a an engineering firm came in and assessed the value of the this private water system and found um, that it would be, you know, it would cost millions to upgrade it. And it, that, of course, is going to become, um, an, uh, um, going to be, have to be paid for by the taxpayers if, if the uh, private system it collapses and, it, and it, um, it has to be merged with the town system. Hey, there's no way another private company yeah. here in our area. Uh, there is a water company that's uh, that's been in various towns and has has taken over. Uh, but they're, but they're a company that that take over. It's you when you're looking at something that's minus twenty five million, you're going to have to put that in there just to bring it to snuff. Uh, there's no there's no there's no comp- private company that's going to do that. It's definitely going to be up to the town and no, the no, taxpayers. No, there is no private company. Well, well, you know that's why you have that's why water systems like this, like road systems, for yeah. instance, used to be privately owned. They used to be turnpikes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, some of the roads used to be privately owned. Um, but, you know, these are public, you know, this is a public utility. It's the concept that, you know, this is a, this is a, an entity that is, benefits the, the public. And, and it, and it uh, that it, it must, uh, in order to fulfill its mission, it really needs to have, you know, be able to draw upon public funds yeah. rather than be privately owned. Well, Especially when yeah. the privately owned people can't keep it up. Yep, 
Absolutely. Right. Um, and, you know, you should see the water in Housatonic. We have a picture of on our article. Yeah. <laughs> an article of a local restaurant yeah. tour with a bottle of this water, a jar of yeah. this brown water, and he's saying, you know, I, why do I have to pay to have this stuff come into my restaurant? You know, they have to use bottled water to do every anything that you know to cook, to serve water to their patrons. I mean, and people are living with this. <laughs> yeah. It's disgusting. It really is disgusting. I mean, you wouldn't want to. You, you wouldn't want to bathe in it. You wouldn't certainly wouldn't want to ingest it. But you don't even want to bathe in it. Uh, yeah. Cook in it. Well, with that being said, let's move on to something else. <laughs> <laughs> and that is uh, the uh, account. Uh, it's a book review. The last days of the Trump presidency. Oh wow! Yeah, Michael Wolf's book. My goodness, I, I have to tell you that we got. So many comments, you know, people were calling us individually and writing us, um, just uh, praising this book review. Um, I mean, it's a book review by a regular writer of ours named Me. Mickey Friedman, but um, his, he, the, it's the book, really, that is amazing. I mean, it's a book by Michael Wolf about the last days of the Trump administration, and it's horrifying. Yeah, how he tried to... Uh, stay in office, right. <laughs> find any way he could to to uh, subvert the election. Right. It's quite shocking and scary, actually, wow. yeah. because, you know, he might not have been able to pull it off, but somebody else somebody might. might. Right. Well, I and, just, uh, I recommend to people that don't believe that something like that is possible, there was a great movie made in the late 50s called Three Days in May. And it deals exactly with presidential coup. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Burt Lancaster was in it. What a great cast. Uh, and uh, it showed the increases, uh, the ins and out. But uh, once again, books like this and uh, what happened when we were shown the last days of the Nixon administration. Um, mm -hmm. You know, these are very, yeah. very powerful people that are in very, very weird situations. And it's... It's dangerous. It's dangerous. That's all you can well, say. Well, there was about a book it. written about it too, called "The Plot Against," a novel written "The Plot Against America." Oh, yes, that was uh, Philip Roth. Yeah, mm -hmm. Philip Roth wrote this. Your novel. neighbor, former neighbor. Yeah, in Connecticut, right? And uh, he, you know, that that portrayed, you know, a, 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 a kind of right wing fascist well, it was, takeover. It was uh, Lindbergh. I mean, what yeah. would have happened if Lindbergh, who was a Nazi sympathizer, had been elected president? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so. It's just you know our history is uh, is is resilient with lots of different things uh, that keeps it going. Uh, spe yeah. Speaking about history though, uh, let's go to Berkshire history uh, and uh, um, the trolley cars and Lee. Yeah. Now this is. I mean, we should tell you first that we have a local historian <clears throat> named Gary Levier who writes um, every other week, he writes an article called Then and Now, where he shows pictures of then and pictures of now. Um, and, you know, and, and this one is, uh, I mean, they're all very interesting, but this one is particularly interesting because it shows pictures. So there used to be all the, this a whole trolley system. Um, yeah, north, south, and it used to, uh, the trolley system, uh, Believe it or not, used to uh, go. You could go all the way to Iowa. <laughs> I'm not trolleys. kidding. On trolleys, on these independent systems that joined. If you could join, were joined. Actually, you could you could ride all the way to Iowa from here on trolleys. <laughs> right, and it would take, it would an take forever. But, right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's showing a picture of a crash. Yeah. Um, on the trolley in Lee, Massachusetts, uh, um, they're right on the Housatonic Bridge, which is where the Big Y supermarket is now in uh, East Lee. Um, and, you know, and, and so it, it shows the bridge and the and the trolley falling over on the bridge. Right, so, but there's still, you know, um, you can still see the. Uh, remnants of the roadbeds for these trolleys, if you if you look for them. And in yeah. fact, some of them have been made into rail trails and um, hiking trails because they, you know, they were actual paths 
that mm. Mm. Uh, once they removed the rails, the roadbed was quite a, um, you know, it was, it was a path that you could use for walking. And, right. Um, so there's still, the remnants are still here. And you can see the the, abutment, the bridge abutments uh, without the bridges, but just the abutments where they used to cross the Housatonic River. So it's um, an interesting piece of history that yes. um, an, an older transportation system that paralleled the the actual road system. You know, it's yeah. funny because our our history with uh, with rail and trolleys. I think mean, you go back and you hear the old timers and read their accounts. How they used to be walking by the rail tracks. The engineer would slow the train down and take them into town and stuff like that. I mean, it, it, it really right. it really is amazing when you look back at the history of trolleys and rails in our area. Uh, it was a yeah. very very short lived but very very well used system back then. <laughs> yeah, well, people didn't have cars. Yeah, yeah. So they they uh, they did uh, you know they, they, people were reliant on that on these trolleys and they were great I mean they, they you know they took you where you wanted to go they were they, they were quiet they uh, yeah. they were electric right so that although you know so that uh, they didn't spew um, exhaust into the streets yeah. It's they were well. It was it was it was a whole network, and as I say, the the trolleys end to end could go all the way to Iowa. Amazing! <laughs> That's right. amazing! That's amazing! It, it is amazing! Yeah. yeah. Well. It's, 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 Stories. So, you know, I guess that's, that's the end of our list. Yeah, well, uh, stories like this, though, are, are great reads. Uh, that shows the history of the area, especially for the new people yeah. that move in here. You combine uh, what you do with covering news on a day-to-day -day basis and also items like this, which bring in the rich heritage and history of our area. And, and we, you know, we have two of these. Besides this Gary Levier article every other Monday, we also have every Tuesday we have Carol Owens has a column. Right. Uh, about something historical, mostly centered on Stockbridge, where she lives. But uh, still, I mean, it's fascinating about, uh, you know, how people lived in, in the Berkshires in the past. Absolutely. So, and, uh, you know, and also if you're talking about what the Edge offers for people who move in here, we, you know, we have our fabulous online calendar, yeah. Um, yeah. which... Uh, it's updated daily, and it's updated by organizations and people in the community posting their own events. So, well, yeah, yeah Carol Owens is an interesting uh, piece too, because she, column because uh, she draws on the history of uh, just as Gary does, uh, Levier does, but uh, her her column is is uh, really interesting, also frequently about cultural institutions and cultural events. All right. Um, and it, they're, it, it's amazing, uh, right. really. And it reminds people of what the rich heritage of this of this area is. All right. The Berkshire Edge, of course, online is theberkshireedge.com and uh, on air right here at uh, Robin Hood Radio. Guys, we'll speak to you next week. Okay. okay. Thank you. Have take a nice care. Labor Day weekend. You too. Take care. Everybody should drive safely. <laughs> That's it. All right. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Uh, that is uh, the Berkshire Edge on air, theberkshireedge.com.